The journey that began from Costa Rica finally has got into Abuja. Talking about Nigerian team, that's a far connect. They finally arrived in Nigeria on Wednesday, and we're glad that the ladies are back to the country safely. Welcoming you on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Ajishafe. We'll be looking at uh, some juicy story coming from the world of sport as we have uh, some gentlemen in the studio, uh, starting from uh, uh, Kabiru Ab Abdullahi. Kabiru, good to have you, Abdullahi. And also, I have uh, Ahmad Emmanuel in the studio. Good to have you, Ahmad. Thank you, for to you. Thank you so much for having me. Good one. Now, let's start with uh, uh, the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. We're still on over there. Well, right now, the ladies are back, and we just have to look at the fact that, well, from the way it is, uh, they finally arrived at Abuja. Uh, that was uh, on, uh, on Wednesday, and we are happy to see the ladies here and hearty. And, but the fact that uh, what happened, just on uh, well, maybe a day or two days ago, right now, a lot of Nigerians were not too happy, but that has been flipped aside, and now the ladies are back in Nigeria uh, for the fact that uh, they were received at the airport by the General Secretary of Nigerian Football Federation, Mame Salusi, and also uh, looking at the fellow Tony Bitoye, represented the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport Development, where the team was actually giving some cash reward, and they promised uh, to fulfill all the allowances, uh, hold them, everything will be set to uh, also concerning Super Falcons coming from the General Secretary of NFL there. Well, right now, Nigerians are happy that ladies finally arrived home. Let's start uh, with uh, uh, Ahmad Emanuel. The ladies, uh, we saw the pictures of them sleeping on the floor, on chair, in Istanbul and all that. But later, NFL came out that, well, it was not their fault. Uh, FIFA actually booked the flight and a lot of issues here and there. But right now, finally, they are here. Well, uh, I would say they're welcome. Mm. Even though I wasn't there physically, mm. I actually, you know, saw the story and I was super glad that they actually arrived safely. Uh, I want to say once again, kudos to the girls. They did very well. Uh, they represented us very well. And of course, in football, you can't expect to win all the time. So it's a game. So somebody must just, you know, crash out. And that's what's, what, what has happened. But then uh, the ability to learn from the defeat is another thing. So I'm um, excited that they gave us a very good outing. They presented us very well. And of course, uh, losing to the Netherlands, of course, you want to believe that. Of course, uh, they are a very good side that they lost uh, uh, to you, talking about the Netherlands side. So uh, we've learned a lot of lessons from that one. And I think the team can only get better. I want to see these girls kept together uh, at least for like you know, a very long time, even if it takes the you know, technical crew to promote them to the senior national team. That would be awesome. Just some little bit of blend will actually ensure that these girls will go out some other time and do us proud. So I'm super proud of them. And of course, I want to say the NFL should do more. You know, there should be this proper monitoring, you know. Uh, not that when things happen, you now come around and start telling us that it wasn't your fault. Uh, you know, what if something worse has happened to these girls, you know. But we, we, hope, we are just thankful that they are back safely. And we say kudos to them. They fought so hard. They presented us very well. And of course, I'm proud of them, like every other Nigerian would do. Abdullahi, well, from your own view uh, concerning the ladies, despite the fact that uh, uh, even though they were very gallant in their matches that they played, yes, uh, they were stopped by Netherlands, and now they are back in Nigeria safely. Oh yeah, great to see. Like just to add to what you said, they've really made us proud. Like going there, showing what they can do, losing to the Netherlands, there's no disgrace to that, but unfortunately the way it was handled afterwards, the whole pictures, well, it's so embarrassing seeing the pictures going around and the NFF not taking the blame, trying to point fingers, saying FIFA or somebody else is responsible, like if it was a serious country or somebody was, might have lost his job for the way they handled the whole situation. But it's good to see them back, hopefully it won't deter them from representing Nigeria next time around. The women's team, honestly, they're doing very well from all age groups, like from the seniors to the juniors, the likes of Azizat, all of them. In fact, Nigerian sportswomen in general, you can argue that they've done really well this year, especially. Mm. I'm sure you are taking cognizance from the Commonwealth Games for what they did. Exactly. They made us so proud by winning almost all the medals in Nigeria, 35 medals. I'm sure the ladies won about 33 or thereabouts. <laughs> <laughs> I, among all the medals, well, good one. We've been talking concerning Falconets. Finally, they are here in Nigeria and they were received by NFF and also the Minister of Youth and Sport also giving some cash. Although right now, 
ladies are they've really shown like million stars and let's see how they will integrate this particular team to join the super falcon some of them are outstanding and we just need to at least uh, let's put some of them into the team to see how our super falcon can be uh, better off good one for the falconet uh traveling to costa rica to represent nigeria at the under 20 world cup we're still waiting for uh timothy ayeku joy to join us uh, from kano if that will actually be possible but we are still talking about uh, 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 sporting stories now. We're talking about another Nigerian who did well while she was in Pretoria, South Africa, to represent Nigeria at the African Gymnastics Championship that took place there. Nigeria did well, but this particular young lady, Stephanie Onosiruka, stood out. She won gold for Nigeria in different categories, and right now she was hosted by the, Federal, the Minister of uh, Youth and Sport Development, uh, Sunday Dari, uh, while they, she was given some uh, reward for the fact that she put the name on Nigeria. Nigeria on the world map and also uh, she's among the talent hunt athletes that Nigeria has picked so far. Well, looking at this young uh, uh, girl uh, representing Nigeria in gymnastics, you know, this kind of sport that, oh, Nigeria, so they can do this. Uh, you know, at times when you watch this on TV, you'll be like, wow, can our body be so soft that we can turn around and all that. But really, it's happening. And one of them is Stephanie Onosurika being rewarded by the minister. And we just have to appreciate that. Sure, you have to, and uh, kudos to the minister himself, you know, uh, taking charge and, of course, monitoring the progress of this uh, young girl. I uh, followed her from the uh, Doe 2020, even uh, one of these uh, competitions hosted in the Laurier National Youth Games. Yes, yeah, so she's been awesome. And uh, if you monitor her progress, you surely know that she's a promising athlete. Mm -hmm. And it's a good one from the, you know, sport minister, like I said, monitoring her, you know, keeping an eye on her and supporting the family as well, who also, in a way, encourage this girl, I mean, to do well. I mean, you can just hope for the best for her. And another beautiful news is that, you know, she'll be going to the Olympics to, you know, learn from some of um, these uh, top-notch gymnasts, you know, come 2024. And uh, it's another boost, uh, you know, for her to keep doing very well. And just watch out for her in the near, in the near future. We can always come out, probably come out and be our chest that we have uh, a gymnast you know, that can also go to the world stage and also, you know, make us proud. Like you said, a lot of people are marveled that, oh, Africans, can we do this? Yes, we can. When you go to a Doe State, Bini City precisely, you see a lot of young, you know, kids doing wonderful things. They just need to be motivated. They just need, need to be discovered, you know, and, and expose them to the world. So I hope this will actually open a way for all the families to look, you know, deep in the talents they have in their own kids and encourage them to do more. Okay, while we're looking at that, I think it's high time that parents and guardians out there should allow their words to really go into sport. Uh, that support she's getting from her family has actually propelled this young girl to do well for Nigeria when it comes to gymnastics. Now, Kabiru, looking at this particular scenario, this young girl has really triumphed when it comes to her, rather. She has really done well for herself in gymnastics now. And you can see a lot of Nigerians, maybe karate, judo, football, handball, volleyball, that they want to go into, but because some parents, oh, yeah. your book, 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 every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you said, education, you know, Nigerian parents. It's good to have education, yeah, yes. But at least point. let them, sh if, they if you see, if you notice any special sport talent in your exactly. child, Support, encourage them. Encourage it, yeah. It's a good one from the minister, at least incentivizing her with the prize money, even though not that much but at least is is an incentive okay for other people okay if you can do this represent the country do well you can be rewarded handsomely i mean what a year it has been for nigerian women in sports you know commonwealth games um toby amusan ophili Essie Brume, Essie Brume, like what a year it has this been. year is actually the ladies' the year. Honestly, <laughs> they've really done very well. For, they've put themselves on the map so hopefully to encourage other younger girls and other people to focus on sports investments more investment in sports by the government hopefully and we'll see hopefully in the future we'll see the rewards well yeah that's a very good one from her the gymnastics it's not easy it's a risky sport you, know, you can break your neck break your hand yeah. sometimes but that, that's a very good one Good one out there coming from the uh, Stephanie Onuruka there for the fact that she did well in South Africa al alongside other Nigerians. But right now, she will be going also for, competi uh, for competition in uh, London and also Japan. But the good thing right now is the fact that she has been uh, at least... Uh, 
put among the athletes that will be enjoying some talent hunt uh, support from the federal government. Right now, she'll be getting some scholarship, and she was also rewarded with 250,000 naira for her exploit over there in South Africa, precisely in Pretoria. Good one, parents, guardians, allow your world to at least show their skills, their sporting skills. If you notice it, encourage them. And who knows, maybe they can become another step new or JJ culture. You never can tell. While we're talking about uh, sporting activities, we go straight to talk about football. What will be Champions League taking, uh, qualifier taking place over there uh, well, in Ghana? Well, from the way it is, uh, our ladies, uh, they tried their best. They, they were able uh, to uh, hold their own against uh, they were able to hold their way against uh, the team from Ghana, Ampem Dagua ladies. That is a tough match there. It's ended nil-nil. And you look at the fact that the ladies actually earlier, they won their game against Atleta. Uh, that was 5-0. Although the team from Ghana also won their own 3-0. But now Nigerian team, that's by also going to be playing against USFA or Burkina Faso in their last game. Uh, to At least if they can win or get a draw, that will qualify them for semi-final. But so far, they've done well. They won one and they drew one. Good one there. Absolutely. Absolutely good one. And this is what you get when your league is somehow top-notch. Mm. Kudos to Aisha Fala. They led, uh, you know, uh, league body. Talking about the female league, the result is showing right now. And we can only encourage Bayesha Kunis to go represented very well. I have these feelings that they'll go far. And, of course, they'll do pretty well, you know, as far as this one is concerned. Um, this will also send a message to, you know, uh, the MPFL and the league management company to mm. also for the men. Yes, it's a challenge right now. I can't remember the last time we can we come out and beat our chairs as Nigerians that uh, you know we have uh, a team after the exploit of Enyimba on that then governor who actually encouraged them, you know, personally. So we have to look deep and you know develop our league, ensure that the, the right things or the right people are put in the right place. For us to ha start getting results right now, we have some teams that will be represented on, you know, in the continent of Africa. Talking about the, you know, our male uh, team. Now we are not too sure if they'll go out there again and do us proud because we can only come out and support them as Nigerians. But deep in our hearts, we know surely that uh, we don't know what to expect from them because of what we're experiencing here domestically. You want to talk about officiating? You want to talk about the, you know, uh, the home uh, uh, must win syndrome and all that. It's not helping us, so mm. we need to do more to learn from the female uh, league body. Kudos to them once again, and I can tell you that these girls will do us proud, trust me. They will do us proud, who knows, at least if they can win against USFA or Burkina Faso or get a draw, they qualify for semi-finals. Oh yeah, it's a very, very good result for them, just to add to what he said. They're doing very well for us in the continent stage, if they can beat Burkina Faso to reach the semi-finals. So watch out and hopefully wish them well and see how it goes. Good one there. We've been looking at the Wafu Bay Champions League taking place. Uh, well, from the way it is right now, Bayelsa Queens are representing Nigeria in the West African uh, Champions League qualifier. And now if they can scale through here, they will be playing at uh, the main competition. Right now, the ladies are really raring to go. They were able to hold their own against Ampem Dakwa of Ghana. It ended in nil-nil. And the first match they played was 5-0 in favor of Bayelsa Queens against the uh, Atleta of Togo. Good one. At least uh, we've been looking at uh, all the teams participating in this competition now uh, while we are still talking about some uh, news uh, from the world of sport let's look at EFL EFL well that's English football league some people call it Carabao Cup now let's look at the result some matches were actually played for them to have the slots in the draw for round uh, three well Leeds United three Barnsley one Tramay Rovers they lost against Newcastle good one for Newcastle United Brighton uh, three Forest Green nil. You have uh, Wickham uh, Wanderers one, Bristol City three. Well, I remember uh, Kaberu yesterday we were talking about this that Newcastle should win their game, and they actually answered you and uh, Ibrahim Yusuf to end there in the favor of all the uh, English Premier League teams. They actually won their game. Leeds United they were not carried away the way Fulham did. They were able to answer well. Le uh, Leeds United, Newcastle, Brighton, and Bristol City. Yeah, no surprises. All the Premier League sides have won their matches. Leeds and Brighton, they won quite convincingly. I think they really showed their class, you know, levels. They play at the highest level of English football. These are lower league teams. No disrespect to them, but they couldn't handle it on the night. Bristol City doing well as well against Wycombe Wanderers. 
Newcastle are just going up, up, up. I think they're about to sign another player, is it Alexander Isaac? Mm. So they're really trying to show that they're part of the big boys this season. I think Newcastle, no one will want to face them this season, the way they're going. But yeah, they really did well. And Good one there. Now, while we are still talking about the EFL, we have uh, Timothy Ayeku joining us from Kano. Timothy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Timothy, even morning, though morning. we've been waiting for you to contribute to your own concerning the ladies, that's far connect. Uh, they are back in Nigeria, and at least Nigerians are happy that the ladies actually shone like million stars. Despite the fact that they, uh, they were aged by Netherlands, they still they were very gallant in their games. They are back in Nigeria. Your take on this quickly? Uh, well, um, history will uh, actually bear witness that um, our ladies have always uh, turned around well in. Uh, competitions either uh, in the African continent or in the world, and of course we'll give it to them. Uh, we it shows that we 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 have great talent in the country, and uh, it tells us that um, uh, a lot can also be achieved if uh, we are next. All we need to you know put together to ensure that uh, these ladies uh, turn out good performance. Uh, we. You know, um, the, 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 the uh, NWFL, that is the Women Premier League, has been a league that has been improving over time. And I heard the other um, uh, 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 pundit say that uh, the Aisha Faludi led board has actually done well to improve the league. And, and this is the evidence, you know, we, we already seen the fruits. Uh, winning three straight matches in the group uh, stage is something where we should actually give our girls. Uh, you know, credits and thumbs up. And we hope that they've learned their lessons after, you know, the exit from the quarter final. So we next uh, outing they will be able to deliver. But uh, we must also see clearly uh, that uh, we have issues with uh, transition in this country, especially uh, talking about football. When you, uh, you're you referring to, you know, transiting players from the under 17, to the under 20 and all of that. If this group of players can be allowed to, you know, be together, you know, and, uh, you know, turn out for another competition, of course, you will definitely see improvement. That's, 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 that's something we must actually look out for as a country. Uh, well, Eko Timothy, joining us from Kano, we really appreciate your time to talk about the Falconets. At least uh, they are back uh, to Nigeria. We just can't wait to see how they will integrate this particular set of players uh, to join the Super Falcons for what they've done over, over there in Costa Rica. They've been outstanding, and I'm very sure some of them, they, they, at least they worth it to make it to the Super Falcons. I'm sure from you too, right? Of course. Some of them are worth it. Uh, we saw the... Uh we saw uh, some of these young girls, and very young, you know, in age and all of that. We saw them uh, do what uh, we didn't expect. Actually, coming in one of the games, from character, it shows that they have the mind, and that's what football is all about. If you have the mind, of course, you will deliver. So they, they have shown that they can be in the Super Falcons in coming years, although they might not be right in terms of experience and all of that. But from the qualities, already we know there are signs that uh, there's hope for the future. Good one out there. Yeku Timothy from Kano. Join us on 360 Sport. We appreciate your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good one. While we are back to the studio, let's uh, quickly move on. As we look at the EFL Cup, third round was immediately done. Uh, the draw has been made, and now we have some team. Manchester City will be facing, <laughs> and they'll be facing Chelsea, a big one there. Well, from the way to Leicester, Newport County, West Ham, Blackburn Rovers, Wolves, Ham Team Wanderers against Leeds United, another one from the EPL team, Nottingham Forest against Spurs, Man United, Axton Villa, Bournemouth, Everton, Liverpool, Derby County. You have Man City, Chelsea, Lincoln City, Bristol, Liverpool. Liverpool, uh, Burnley, Crawley, and straight down to Steve Nage against Charlton, MK Dons, Morecambe, and uh, Morecambe rather, Newcastle against Crystal Palace, Brighton against Arsenal, you have Brentford, Gillingham, Southampton versus Sheffield Wednesday. Those are the teams I'll be playing in the ne uh, next round. That's the third round rather. Well, from the way it is, a, a big one here. But I look, I noticed that most of the teams there, they actually uh, EPL, EPL teams. It means a lot of EPL teams actually drop. From this competition even before they get to the main uh, level of semi-final or final definitely uh somebody must go mm -hmm. uh the big one for me is chelsea man city and um yeah surely it's a match to watch out for but then no disrespect to all the fixtures trust me because everybody at this level 
uh, yeah, you caught the task. To, to you know go or sail through. So let's see what happens. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, that's why it's uh, been tagged the FA Cup or the EFL Carabao Cup. Whatever it is, I know surely a lot of talents will be discovered for you know top clubs to may maybe chase their signatures and all that. Uh, that's one of the importance of the you know uh, competition per se in England and probably due to other countries that are looking towards the so same direction. But for me, it's we should watch out for some exciting you know matches. Trust me, and uh, we just cannot wait for you know the next round to kick off. Good morning well, there. Well, I'm sure you want to agree that uh, the battle is between Chelsea and Man City. Oh no, no, that's the big one. That's the game that stands out out of all the fixtures. But mm. it should be a good. It should be a match to watch out for. You know, Sterling obviously going back to Man City as well. You know, he said the way they treated him there, they were benching him. They weren't really playing him. So maybe he might have something to say that on that night. But mm. yeah, the EFL Cup, I don't know. Some people don't really read the competition. They think it's a... But just, a cup is a cup, yeah, man. Cup is At least exactly, money is attached to it. Exactly. A lot for of money. Teams, for teams that haven't won anything in many years, I thought if they can, if it, From the way it is now, looking at about Wolves, Leeds United, EPL, yeah. one of them must drop. Yeah. You have uh, Man United, Aston Villa, EPL, yeah. one of them must drop. Uh, Bournemouth, Everton, one will drop. Yeah. You go down Chelsea, Man City, and by the time all these strong, strong teams drop, there's every chance for uh, the other uh, uh, league uh, clubs to actually at least have a chance to move ahead. And if any of them is able to win it, they will earn a lot of money. Oh, Look at Nigerian oh. League, uh, ITO Cup here, yeah. by Elsa United. They shocked everyone. They were able to win it. And they went home, even though the money has not been received. <laughs> but at least I hope that they were able to win, that they will still get some money uh, yeah. from this uh, NFF or thereabout. Yeah. But right now, winning that trophy got them the chance to go for the Continental, although they were dumped out early. <laughs> but at least yeah. they were able to do Yeah, it gives underdogs the chance like, mm. to believe in themselves. Not even about money as well as the medal. You know, At least once you retire, you can be able to show your grandchildren, OK, I have won something in my career. I played. I, I did this. just a <laughs> random footballer. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent competition. What out for the games. Good one there. Now we move away from the EFL Cup. Let's talk about the big one, the draw be coming up today. UEFA Champions League is here. Well, from matches we actually play quickly. Uh, yesterday, qualifying result. We look at those results in the UEFA Champions League while we look at the Probables quickly. Now, although uh, from the way it is, uh, UEFA Champions League, uh, from the, why the draw be coming up today? A lot of people are expecting what's going to be happening, which team will play which team. Let's look at the port so far available uh, in the UEFA Champions League quickly. We have uh, port one, port two, three, and four. You have Real Madrid, Frankfurt, Man City, Milan, Bayern, PSG, Porto, Ajax in port one. Liverpool, Chelsea, Barcelona, Juventus, Atletico Madrid down to Tottenham All Sport, Sevilla, Leipzig inclusive. Port four, Rangers, Namo Zagreb. Uh, you have Marcel, Copenhagen, Club Bruges, Celtic, Victoria Present, Maccabi Haifa. In three, you have Leverkusen, Sportings, Benfica, Napoli, Inter, Chakta, Salzburg, and Dortmund. Those are the teams that are <laughs> uh, right now, different ports now. Very tough one. By the time they begin to do it, although we are waiting for the draw by the evening, that should be ready. But right now, a lot of people are beginning to look at who and who meet themselves. Well, I think uh, it's um, the biggest morning spinning football competition in Europe and uh, everybody wants a part of it. Uh, Barcelona maybe will want to have a say this time around. Mm. The experience they had last year was a bitter one. Uh, probably they don't want that to repeat itself, but I think they are still struggling. And for Real Madrid, well, watch out for them. They are always full of surprises, especially in the UEFA Champions League. Mm. They are the king of Europe. You can't take that away from them. So watch out for them. Man City as well will be coming, uh, especially the English team. I should just put it that way. Liverpool, Chelsea, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, Man City, like I mentioned. So let's see what happens, who is going to be facing who. But the biggest, uh, you know, qualifiers that went out last night was between PSV and, of course, uh, Rangers. So uh, it tells you summarily that not every uh, good footballer can make a best coach. And that was shown yesterday between, uh, you know, uh, you know, Ruth Van Steroys led PSV against mm. uh, Rangers. So Van Broekhoff. Honestly, well, uh, let's just see what happens, though. Let's see. 
Okay, on the results that happened yesterday before they get them qualifying for the uh, the draws, we have uh, Rangers, the Edge, PSB, and the Bone 3 2 on aggregate. Uh, Dynamo Zagreb, Edge, Bodo, Glimt 4 2. Dram Sonspel of Turkey, they lost against uh, Copenhagen of Denmark and they got 2 1. And that's actually qualified Dynamo Zagreb, Rangers, and Copenhagen to be among the team we showed earlier that will be, uh, be in the draw for UEFA Champions League that will be done today. Well, Kabiru, this is really good. Uh, as we were talking yesterday, you mentioned that Rangers should be able to make it, and yeah. they did. And you look at Copenhagen from Denmark, Perenia, uh, <laughs> part of Champions League uh, yeah. uh, first uh, round, they are always there. And Zagreb also, they were able to scale through. Yeah, congrats to them. At least they've made it to the group stages. But unfortunately, I think they will just be there to add to the numbers. They will probably finish fourth and get dumped out, or maybe highest reach third and go to Europa League or something. Well, yeah, they've done well. You know, Van Nistelrooy against Van Bronckhorst, two former teammates. Van Nistelrooy was a far better player, but unfortunately, as a coach, maybe he's a bit short, similar to Lampard, maybe. But yeah, it was a good one to see. And regarding the draws, Champions League draws, I think watch out for Man City this year. I feel this might be their year. Obviously, they've fallen short the past few years, finished in the final lost in the final, lost in the semi-final. But this year, watch out for Man City and AC Milan as well. Great to see them back amongst the elite where they belong after a long while. Um, port 4, I don't know, out of all the ports, I think Port 4 is the, probably the weakest one. So yes, people very, want to... So they, I see, well, they, they'll be picking from them to fill up others. So from the way it is, uh, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. Of course, yeah, like you said, they, they'll pick from them to fill others. And that's where you probably see some surprises if you if you probably won't agree with me because sometimes when you're on direct your opponent you might just get shocked you know this is the UEFA Champions League so nobody's coming to play uh it's just exciting to see that um the Champions League is going to be back soon and we're waiting for the draws like you said probably before the day runs out we'll be having it or even before noon so let's see what happens Good one out there. We've been giving you some stories coming from the world of sports, talking about the Falconers. Yeah, back in Nigeria. And also, we have a Champions League draw be coming up today. That's a good one there. I have uh, time to have uh, to, two gentlemen in the studio talking about Amadi Mano. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And also, Abdullah uh, Kabiru, good to have you. Pleasure to be here. And from Kano, uh, the time uh, joining us from Kano, we had uh, that's Timothy Ayeko, a wonderful one from Kano there. And I am a Denny. Ajishafe. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.